You're listening to the Pure Fury Creations Entertainment Network. The views and opinions expressed on this episode are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or philosophies of the PFC Entertainment Network or any of the affiliates that make this show possible. This show has also been rated M for mature audiences only. And welcome back, everybody, to Shh, We Don't Talk About That. I'm Joanna, and I'm joined by my beautiful co-host, Natalie. And today we are talking about the second part of our episode from last week. Last week we talked about that was me coping, and this week we're talking about this is me coping now. So it's a transition. It's definitely like a, a movement between the two. Um, and we didn't really lay out like a format of when you might want to talk versus when um why won't you go away sorry there's an x there in the corner oh well okay (laughs) and that's part of the episode folks so i wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that you wanted to to lay out about this before we kind of kind of got into the topic um trying to think i know i had some things in my brain yesterday um, obviously, last week we talked about like negative coping skills or unhealthy coping skills and kind of where they come from and how they're developed. Um, and this week is obviously the opposite of that. So healthy coping skills. And again, like where do they come from and how they're developed? If you're raised in like a healthy, happy, loving um nurturing environment then you're going to learn healthy coping skills by watching whoever your caregivers are um and you're going to see like how those people respond in stressful situations and what they do to kind of calm themselves down or how they manage their own emotions because then they're going to teach you how to manage your emotions and how to allow you to explore them but in a healthy and safe way um and kind of paying more attention to like what your stressors are or what your triggers are. And once you know what they are, okay, how do I, how do I cope with them in the moment? Like, what do I do in the moment? And is it healthy for me? Is it unhealthy for me? What can I do to, to change that? Um, and kind of the best understanding that you have of how you cope with situations is not going to obviously match somebody else's way that they cope with situations, but being able to have conversations with people around, hey, if this comes up, like, what do you do? Like, how do you deal with it? Like, how do you manage all the stress in your life and your 12 kids and all the things? Um, And it allows us to just learn different strategies from different people, Um, much like the bingo last week when you were like, oh, I didn't even realize that, yeah, I do some of these on the unhealthy bingo sheet. So then this week we have healthy bingo sheet. Um, so again, looking at things that we do to take care of ourselves, which also looks a lot like self-care, um, in order to kind of, um, de-escalate and manage our own emotions, not shutting them down, not ignoring them, not covering them up with something else, but being able to say like, okay, I'm really frustrated right now. Why am I frustrated? 
Am I frustrated at myself? Am I frustrated at somebody else? What can I do in this moment so that I'm back in control of my emotions instead of my letting my emotions be in control of me? Um, so I yeah. think more like the healthy coping skills. Jason adds that magic, and then the other coping skill sheet that we'll kind of talk about today that just gives you different ways to do different things depending upon how you're feeling in the moment. I'm going to hold that bingo sheet back up again. And then that kind of gives people an idea of one of the things that are one of the sheets that we're talking about. But, um, you know, there's so much to unpack here, so much to unwrap. Mm -hmm. I I had an incident this morning where I think we, I think we should start here. So I had an incident, incident this morning where I just I reached out for a, a favor um, for somebody and from somebody, and it's something that is important to me, um, like really important to me, but it wouldn't matter to anybody else really. And it's over my, my trip and my 50th birthday. So it's a long stretch of time that I need some help with. So I just kind of reached out as a favor and was like, you know, is this able to something that's able to be done? And instead of them see, being like, oh yeah, let me check my schedule or whatever, like I would do now. They sent me back a list of like, it's possible, but here's all the reasons why I might not be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And it immediately triggered in me a feeling of like, oh my God, I'm a burden. I don't, you know, I don't matter enough. I And I'm the problem in this situation and I'm going to be more of a burden to this person. And right. instead of responding with like that feeling to them. I thought about it for a minute and then sent back something along the lines of, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate you're even checking into it. I didn't think about how busy your schedule was. Let me see if I can find another option. And then if I can't, I'll reach back out to you. Now, I was still feeling all the things, but I yeah. was able to take it in the moment, like respond with that. And they had their response. And then I was able to be like, okay, now what do I want to do with this? So instead of going and doing something unhealthy like eating or um, beating myself up or, uh, you know, in, in hurting myself in any way, I just took a moment and processed what I was feeling and why. And I knew why and felt the feelings. It took probably a minute and a half um, because I, I'm used to doing it now. I, t right. I'm, I understand what I'm doing. I'm trying to feel the feeling. I'm not trying to avoid it. I'm not trying to make up the story. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. all, the, all the reasons why I'm upset. I'm just feeling why I'm sad or upset or feeling guilty or whatever it is. And then I moved through that and came on the other side and was like, okay, and I have solutions now. Right. So the, the feeling of like not mattering, blah, 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 whatever, that's something separate that I might have to address at a separate time, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be dealt with right now and this and i also was able to recognize in the moment that the way that that person responded to me is exactly how i would have responded to them prior to therapy yeah because you damage control that's what you do you list out all the yes. possible contingencies that could happen just so you know it's not that i don't want to do it right um so be, I, it was like sitting in the middle almost on a like a a, a line, you know, like, and and on one side is the healthy, and then on the other side is the unhealthy. And I was able to recognize feeling all the unhealthy, but still, like, you used to do that, uh -huh. and then also feeling like, and now you're going to do this, yeah. And how they respond to me doing something healthy, that's that's not anything I can control. If they get upset, Absolutely. if they feel slighted, whatever, I, I'm sorry about that, but that's not. There's nothing I can do about that. And coming mm -hmm. to this place is um, free. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's crazy because if you think about like, not just what you used to do, but obviously what this other person did. So one, it's like, I need to remind you that my life is really, really busy. Um, but also if I am able to do it, because I will make sure that I do it. So then that way you're even more grateful because I stepped in and I did something you asked me to do, even though you know just how busy my life is. So it's, 
it gives you a different, obviously it gives you an, an, an icky, for lack of a better word, like an icky feeling that you're like, oh, I used to do that. Where now mm-hmm. if someone's like, hey, Joanna, do you think you might be able to do this? And you're like, man, I have a lot going on. You know, let me check and see. I'll let you know if it's possible or not. Like being able yep. to just be able to say that. And then someone's like, okay, great. Thank you. It can right. just, and that feels more balanced and feels more like, yeah, I have a lot going on. And like, I would really love to help. But also like, I don't have to help. If I don't have the ability to help or the time to help, like I can say no yeah. and it's okay. Well, that's that you have to be prepared to be able to say no. That's yes. the second part of this is not just mm-hmm. saying like, let me check my schedule. You can't be like, oh, hang on, let me check my schedule and then do everything to move heaven on earth so that you can fit that into your schedule. And right. then you do it like that's not the healthy part of it. So right. you have to follow through with the yes or no that's true to you. Yes, I actually do have time and I can do this. It's not a problem at all. Um, and it's not that you won't, don't take on burdens or chores or tasks or things to help other people that might be, like I said, a burden or a difficulty for you. You know, It's not that right. we never do that. We don't overextend ourselves. That's what we're trying to avoid is yeah. the overextension, burning the candle mm-hmm. at both ends, trying to meet everybody's needs. So instead... We're using these healthy coping skills that are stopping us from doing whatever it is that we're doing that is making us try to meet unrealistic expectations. And usually they're our own. That's what I've found is that usually I'm the one who's setting the expectations. And when they can't be met, I'm disappointed in all the people who didn't do their things. This is how it used to be. I was disappointed in all the people who didn't do their things to help to make sure that that thing happened. Like, I'd be upset that this person had listed off all of their life things that were going on instead of recognizing like, oh shit, I didn't even think about all of that. Damn, this was, you know, sorry about that. I should have thought of, and I actually did tell him, I'm sorry, that was my bad. I should have thought about that. Um, Being able to do that and like sit in that feeling and not have it trigger those. Right responses it's not that you don't have the feelings it's the responses yes right because i've changed my beliefs and so when i looked at this bingo sheet i actually did it with my husband um Love and it. it's funny he's had some therapy but i've had the dbt and the cpt and the emdr and all those things and when i read this bingo sheet i was like oh yeah i can, i got like 18 out of 25 and but i knew that Um, Most of them had come because I had done those that work. He got about five out of 25, um, which is not bad, but it still doesn't give you a whole lot of options. Right. Right. It's nice to have have options when it comes to anything. And being able to be like, do I really have the time to sit down and like, do I really have time to go take a bath? Okay, I don't have time to go take a bath. So what can I do instead? Well, I can go wash my hands. I can put mm-hmm. cold water on my face. Like yeah. it's good to have options rather than like these are the only five things I have to choose from, and I cannot right. deviate from these five things because these ones I know work, even though they may or may not work for every single situation. Right, and well, and I think a lot of times we're not labeling things that are healthy coping skills, like True. you know we know that going for a walk and things like that, but talking about like compliment someone you love, cleanse your social media accounts, Um, you know, read a chapter of a book, make a to-do list, watch a funny show or movie. I don't know if Mm -hmm. people recognize, like sometimes people would think that those, if you're only running to that and then you're not going back and addressing the thing, then it's not a healthy coping skill. But if you're using these to get you out of that triggered moment, and then figuring out how to move through it. Yes. They're all healthy coping skills. And you can add on, like, I added on things like yoga. Um, I sing, uh, dancing, playing with the kids, even doing a thing. A hopscotch got me out of, like, my, you know, like, my adolescent brain into my adult chair. Uh, into my adult chair. Gardening, mm-hmm. creating something, but even, like, getting a hug. Body, you know, that body touch. Yeah. 
or I'll go out and walk, walk around and hug a tree just to feel the energy of the earth. And I know people think that sounds kooky until you friggin' do it and are open to it. Right. Right. Walk with bare feet and feel the connection to the, you know, there's that, that there's science there, but you feel that Mm -hmm. connection to the earth. Those things can help reset you. And there's so many times where I don't know if we recognize that it's more than just like, I got to breathe through it. Like there are options besides that. You can yeah. breathe through it for the first moment. And then maybe you, like you said, you like, I, I'll massage my hands or my foot. If I'm sitting there, um, not to hurt myself, to gently feel a different sensation, uh, mm-hmm. petting my animal, petting my cat, you know, getting out of that feeling and then going and doing something that's positive is what's going to send your mess, the message to your brain. Like not only did you get through this, but also there's like good things that you can focus on besides that negative thing. That negative thing does not fill your whole world. That, that problem does not take up everything that you're dealing with. You've got other options. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm, I'm at with that. I, I'd like people to remember, I'd like you folks to remember out there that even when you have things like intrusive thoughts, self thoughts of self-harm, suicidal ideations, um, self-recrimination, emotional outbursts, these can change by just using some of these small coping skills. Slow, yeah. It takes slow, it's slow, it's over time. You didn't learn these bad behaviors overnight. You're not gonna right. unlearn them overnight. It's gonna take some time. But if we can give ourselves the peace and the grace and the space to grow. Mm-hmm. then you can find yourself like, like I did this morning where I took a moment, I felt the emotions, I did some deep breathing and then I went and I took a shower, which felt great and got me completely out of my feelings. And then I went and I did my hair and my makeup. And by the time I was done, I was like, Oh, I feel fine. I mean, there's yeah. still this thing. I still have to deal with the issue that, I, that I need that I ask for the favor, but I'll figure that out. So yeah, good place to be. I told you it's very free. It definitely is. It definitely is. Because you were able to kind of, and throughout all the therapy that you've been through, like you've been able to identify your your stressors or your triggers. Um, You've been able to kind of identify what things do cause you stress. Even if, I don't know if your therapist ever did that, where like, make a list of like everything that stresses you out. Like I'll do that a lot with my clients. I'll be like, just make a list of everything that stresses you out and then set that list aside. Calm down, breathe. When you're in a neutral place or like a balanced place, come back to the list. Now write down everything you do to cope with all of those things that stress you out. Whether it's good or bad, just jot it down. And again, just set it aside. Um, and then another day or another time, go back and look at it and be like, Okay, wow. Yeah, I can see that like when this stresses me out, I react this way and that's not super healthy for me. What can I do different? So then finding something different and again, listing them all out. Some you may already do that's that's coping, that's healthy and some you may not. So being able to kind of go back down that list and then you've created a list, one of everything that stresses you out. And then two, everything that you do, whether it's positive or negative. And then three, everything that you can do when those things stress you out that are positive. So that forces my clients a lot of times to be like, well, I need to Google. Like, I need to see what the Google's going to tell me about different strategies to use. And it gets it gets you out of your head because everything's swirling around in our brain all of the time. So the more it swirls around in there and doesn't kind of get physically out of you it's really hard to see the forest through the trees so by Mm. being able to kind of make that list and like okay this is how I cope this is what I do okay that's not really healthy so let me add some other options so that when something like that pops up again I can try this um which is fantastic and then like I mentioned earlier asking other people how they cope in similar situations um we're just saying you know, i like to have a conversation it might just be random but i like to talk about like how do you deal with all the shit in your life i just need to know you need to understand how you deal with it not because like 
I need to really understand you per se. Well, like I want to understand some different strategies that you use that maybe I've never thought about using, or that's kind of like outside my norm, which is then going to help me be like, okay, that's helpful, which then allows you both to have conversations. And now it's not just one person giving you different tips and tricks. You're giving them different tips and tricks because you're like, oh, I do this. And they're like, look at that. Thought about like just massaging my own foot when I'm feeling stressed, when I'm talking about something and nobody can really see me massaging my foot. So why don't I massage my foot? So it just opens the door to different possibilities because we don't live in a vacuum. Like everything is happening all around us, not just to us, but to everybody else that we come into contact with. And we don't have the same knowledge that everybody else has. So let's try something different in order to feel something different so then we can react in a different way. Yes, exactly. And I think with that, we also need to, one of the really important things that my therapist taught me, I'm sure you do this with your clients, is to sit and try and feel, where are you feeling this in your body? Yeah, Because if you can recognize that a tightness in your chest is related to when you're feeling like you're being yelled at or you're afraid or whatever, and then you you don't know what's going on, but you feel a tightness in your chest, you can then make the correlation that, okay, my body's telling me that I feel afraid. I'm not really sure why. I just know I'm anxious. Let me take a minute Mm -hmm. and just work through that. And it can help us recognize before the trigger happens. Yes. So, and which is another, it's, it's a skill. It's a, it's definitely a skill. It takes time to learn Um, and you can't beat yourself up for figuring it out afterwards. Right. Cause that's not helpful. You're never going to solve anything with that. Shame is never going to be a motivator for you. That's going to actually get you far, you know, where you want to go along this path of healing. Correct. So you got to be like, man, I didn't handle that the way that I wanted to. What am I going to do next time? Yeah. You know, you can say I fucked that up, but what am I going to do next time? How will I handle this better next time? Mm -hmm. And then hopefully next time you do. But what happens is what I found this morning is eventually you get to a place where suddenly you do. You just are like, oh, I feel it, but I'm not going to react. I'm going to do this thing instead and then problem solve. Mm hmm. So, absolutely. A lot of that comes from like our own self talk and being able to acknowledge whenever we are harsh with ourselves and being able to be like, oh my God, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I thought of that. Nope. It's not that I'm stupid. It's that why would I think somebody else has a lot of things going on? Like, I'm not living their life. I don't know what they're actually managing. So, like, I have no idea what somebody else is dealing with. So it's not that I'm stupid. It's that I don't have all the information or it's not that like, um, or even like you said, like, man, I fucked that up. Okay. I didn't fuck it up. I just didn't have all the information. I made a mistake. I'm human. I'm allowed to make a mistake. And changing your self-talk again, it's not easy. Cause like first you have to recognize like how many times a day you mm-hmm. talk down to yourself. Yes. Um, and then every time that you do, what can I say differently? Whether or not I believe it in the moment, doesn't matter. What can I say differently to take that negative self-talk and make a positive self-talk? Because then ultimately, the phrase like fake it till you make it actually becomes true. Like the more you're able to stop yourself and turn it around, then the less negative you're going to feel in your body and eventually the more balanced or the more calm you're going to feel because you're like okay that's not true this is actually what's true i can make i can make up a story and assumption about literally anything but what good is that going to do me? it's not going to do me any good so what are the facts that i actually know to be true and let me state those instead right right and that was a big part of what i did this morning wasn't about like Like at first I had those feelings and then I was like, okay, wait a minute. What's the truth? They've got Mm -hmm. this going on. You've got this going on. They've got that. You know, these things, you know it. So that would, and also they have this history. 
that you are aware of. So it makes sense why they might respond the way that they are to me. And it Mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do with me. Yeah. And this was actually a lesson that I had to give my grandsons. My son, my older, you know, my son lives with us and he can get grumpy. He has autism and he doesn't like people. So when they're here, even though he loves his nephews, like if they get too loud or they disturb his peace, he'll come out grumbling. And that, and, or even in the morning when he got up to go to work and you can see him on the balcony, my grandson was down here reading. You can see him on the balcony, come down and he's like, and my grandson asked me, he said, you know, I saw him this morning and he, he looked really mad and did I do something? And thankfully he has healthy coping skills because he's been taught them. So he didn't respond to those feelings that he had. He just asked me about them and I was able to tell him, oh no, that's not you. He's like that all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. his morning face, you know, and that helped him move through that feeling of like, does he, is he mad at me? Does he not care about me? Whatever. Right. And I recognized in the moment when I was doing a few things with him, like I was teaching him DBT skills that I had never learned Mm because we did the same thing um, about a tone that he used when, when talking to somebody and he said it in a way of like, you should know that. And it triggered like this fight thing. And I was able to have a conversation with him and say like, wait a minute, instead of you guys getting triggered, let's, and DBT was a huge part of that. And it was so, um, empowering Mm -hmm. that I was able to give him that knowledge calmly in the moment, didn't get triggered myself, just explain things to him or any of the kids. Yeah. And, and be able to feel like, okay, I'm teaching them a skill here that they are now going to be able to build upon. And it's one that I didn't, I didn't have that. Nobody was able to teach me that. So I'm kind Mm -hmm. of filling that gap. You know, and that, um, like I said, it felt empowering, but it also feels like such a loving gesture. Yeah. You know, so it it was really good. I, the growth that I've had, if if I, I wish I had some like video of me for my first few sessions from therapy, I really do so that I could just watch it and be like, wow. Yeah. We have come so far and we have moved so far. You know, my journals help a little bit, but I didn't start journaling until far into therapy um, regularly. It's like 2020. So this is, you know, 11 years of doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, and working with the podcast and doing that every two weeks. And there's work that I have to do with that. I'm holding myself accountable constantly, but not in an exhausting way anymore. It used to be exhausting. Sure, sure. But now I'm just like, Okay, well, how can I do that different? I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Let's change that, you know, or, okay, that's something I need to address. I'm going to put that on my list and I will come to it when I can get to it because you can't let your list of things overwhelm you. No. You can only do one thing at a time, man. So pick your thing, work on that. Try not to let the others stress you out. Which isn't easy, as we know. It's not, it's so, it sounds so simple, but it's, it's really, it takes a minute to be able to figure out like, and I remember I did that acronym COPE Mm -hmm. and I talked about that early in the podcast and like, basically it's the same kind of thing where you're just figuring out what it is you need. You're opening yourself up to new, uh, new possibilities you're yeah. planning what it is you're going to do if you know that there's a stressful situation or how yeah. you're going to react if you have some response and then you are exonerating forgiving yourself when you make a mistake yeah you know and just keeping that acronym in, in the back of my mind has helped me like okay just characterize what's going on what is it you know like those kinds of things and going mm-hmm. through the That short little list has allowed me to branch out so far. And it was just something where I was like, okay, what am I going to give me something small that I can hold on to that I can carry with me. That gives me like a, almost like a, a lesson plan. I open it, I open up cope and it's got uh, each little step, four little steps right there for me to use healthy coping skills. 
that's what mm-hmm. the end result is every time. So um, I just really encourage people to to take that time to open themselves up to new thoughts. I really love that second sheet that you put in there. I hope people. I hope that Jason's able to to share it. But it mentioned like washing your hands, making some tea, and it listed them out whether they were you know. Um, thought things that where you're going to write out your thoughts or mm-hmm. you were going to work on your body, somatic responses, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. It categorized each thing. And that yeah. I thought was super helpful too. Um, just because it, it breaks it down into smaller chunks and doesn't overwhelm you with like, <laughs> they gave you like a hundred options in there, you know? Yes. Yeah. And so, I like it too. Like I've used it for years. I'm with clients, even like with kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and before I circle back to that, I wanted to first circle forward. Whatever I was going to say. Um, when you were, I'll, I'll put a pin in that for a minute. When you were talking about uh, kind of like uh, making a list and figuring things out and using cope um, and trying to like better understand and break things down chunk by chunk to make it more manageable. Um, that reminded me of like when you make a list to go grocery shopping, right? Like initially, like you're writing frantically all over the list, like you need the milk and then you need the bread and then you need the frozen peas, but then you need the chocolate pudding. Like you're putting it all on the list, which if you just go based off of item for item on your list, you're literally running all over the store. Mm -hmm. So Again, like making your list, but then going back and like categorizing it. Like, okay, these are all cold. These are all frozen. These are all this. These are all this. So it helps you do a seamless shopping experience, if you will. Not that you're not going to divert because who doesn't look, go to love to look at the books or maybe the candles or maybe some clothes on the way. So that you're always going to have some diversions along the way. But if you know... I need to prioritize my list in a way that makes sense to me, then it's going to be much more helpful. Same thing if you're making a list to do at work, like what's the priority? So when you're making a list for yourself, like how to manage your stress, what are the big things that stick out? Those are the priority. Those are the things that we want to manage faster than like the smaller things. Because if we can manage the big things, if we have milk, we can make a multitude of things. If we only have cheese, we can only make so many things. So if we are able to work on the bigger skills or the bigger stressors first, then the smaller stressors are going to kind of fade away because they're going to fall under some of those bigger stressors. Okay. And that makes sense. Uh, it pops into my head. That's, that's kind of exactly how I address, I address things because... Yeah. You have to kind of handle the big things that are right in front of you. Yes. And like I said, you cannot deal with that whole list at once. No. So like you said, categorize it, prioritize it, and then just like give yourself grace, breathe. You'll get through it. You will get mm-hmm. through it. Absolutely. No different than a to-do list around the house. It's the same. Yeah. It re- literally is the same thing. It's just you're working internally. Versus externally, mm-hmm. you know, so, and then you were saying something, you had something else about, I think kids, something, I don't know. Oh, put- with, yeah, with the coping skills sheet that I've given it to um, little kids all the way up through adults because it breaks it down in different sections. Um, like it breaks down distraction, grounding, emotional release, self-love thought challenges and access your higher self. So it's like, okay, am I in the, like, and again, you can look at your list of stressors. Do I need a distraction from the stressor? Great. Let me go to the distraction box. And it gives me options. Have a conversation, listen to talk, radio, um, read, do puzzles, TV, arts and crafts, like things of that nature that are going to distract me. Um, and then it also gives like all the pros of each of those, um, each of those boxes. So the distraction box gives you a list of distraction and then the pros of doing that. Obviously having a distraction gives your heart and your mind break, gives you a uh, short term relief, gets you through a crisis. Then it also has the cons. If you use these too much, you watch TV, 
too much. You play video games too much. You distract too much. Then your cons are you can't do this for too long. It's not resolving the underlying issues. Meds right. can make it hard to concentrate. Like, so it breaks it down so much simpler. Um, if you need a grounding technique, if you just need an emotional release, which is um, funny because a client of mine yesterday, she had sent me a message in the morning and she's like, I got frustrated with something at work. So I went in my car and I screamed in my car and I got a headache and my throat hurt. So I said, well, perhaps that's not the emotional release you were looking for. What else could you try? So then she comes back hours later. Okay, I tried journaling and I wrote it all down and I cried. Still have a headache because I cried, but feel a lot better. And I'm like, great. Well, then screaming is not what you need when you need an emotional release. You need to journal it or you need to talk it out verbally with somebody. Um, so finding like, let me try it. Let me see if screaming works for me. Like screaming's not going to work for everybody. But then neither is journaling. Like you have to find what's going to work best for you and then how it's going to help you. And then how it can negatively impact you if you only use that particular um, skill in which to cope with. Right. And that was something that I struggled with for a while. Um, my go-to was to call my husband or a friend. And I mm -hmm. remember my therapist <laughs> saying like, oh, so you can't self-soothe. And I was like, oh, that's not true. And it, you know, it, it brought it to my attention. I hadn't even yeah. realized it. And it, I still have that like urge, but now I think I talked about this last, last episode. Now I don't make the call first. I process first. Then right. when I want to talk through it in a calm way and I've let them, like I've made my decision. I figured out what I'm going to do. Then I talk to them or if I need advice, fine. But I make sure that I actually need advice right. that I'm not running to somebody because I just am like, want that reassurance from them. Because a lot of times when we were so treated so badly when we were young and belittled and, and shut down and pushed away and like our voices were closed off. We often look to others' voices to right. guide us. And then people that we admire, people that we uh, look up to, those become mm -hmm. the voices that we then follow because we don't trust our own. Our own was right. shut down so much that we feel like, well, that can't be a valid place for me to go. And that's going to yeah. be one of the first things that you're going to have to work through is learning how to trust your own voice, your own instinct, your own decisions mm -hmm. to be able to help you cope with something and get through it. Because if you are always relying on, if, if I'm always relying on somebody else, then I need somebody else every time there's a problem. Well, what right. happens if I'm alone and there's a problem? Then what do I right. do? Do I find a stranger? Do I call? Do I go down my list and call 17 people trying to reach somebody? You know, mm -hmm. hoping that I get a hold of somebody that might understand. Right. That was the position that I put myself in for a while. And I didn't recognize that that's what happened. So I hope people will take, I hope my, our listeners out there will take a moment to, to self-analyze. Like, am I going to be able to trust my own voice in certain things? And if I'm not, do I need to talk to somebody about that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And even people them all over social media like saying whatever happens and like oh my gosh I don't know what to do mm -hmm. like and that's a way of like reaching out like you literally have no idea what to do so you're seeking other people's opinions or other people's ideas and then let's say some of the ideas that you use don't go well well then now I have somebody to blame from like the idea that I was given going to shit, I can blame that other person instead of taking my own accountability. So again, it's not allowing you to figure things out on your own, which again, not easy to do because if yep. you don't trust yourself and you don't trust your gut, that takes some work. First, we need to work on that in order to get you to that place. And then once you're in that place, then it's a lot easier for you to be able to trust yourself and your gut and maybe reach out to people just for like, hey, I just want to make sure, like, this is what he did. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. And some people are going to be like, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. But like, if it worked out for you, great. Right. 
And some people might be like, um, it doesn't matter what I think. What do you think? Like and being able to flip it back around on you um, yeah. in order for them to, and for you to, again, trust your gut, go with your instincts. Well, and it's funny because we're talking about this brings, it brings to mind another example that I had um, when in my sub, we have people that come to our house from a company and they, every year, every year they come to the house and they start door knocking. doesn't matter if you have a no soliciting sign. It doesn't matter if they, if you've just replaced all your windows, your roof, which is what happened to us. We've just replaced all our windows in our roof. And that's what they're coming for is to ask about windows, roof and siding. And I would start to get like upset because it would set the dog off. And then there was all, you know, all these saying they ring the bell and it's uh, just think little things. Cause that's what we do when, when you have trauma and you haven't dealt with your trauma, all of your feelings are going to come out at little things. Yes. So that's yes. exactly what happened. So I would get up really upset when these guys would answer the door. And um, there was a day where they, or when I would answer the door and find them there, and there was a day where I answered the door. So it wasn't just said, hi, could you please leave? And he was like, now for me, that was a coping skill. It wasn't Mm -hmm. the best way. And I thought about it later and was like, I wish I would have handled it this way, but at least I didn't yell at him. I didn't, you know, it was a middle ground. My husband was so offended that he told me that I can't answer the door when the magic window people come. That he's going, I didn't mean to say their name, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Wait, I can't answer the door when they come. He's going to do it because he's like, hey, you know, I'm all set. Thank you very much. And I'm like, why am I wasting my time and my breath and my energy? You know, like I have all these thoughts, things that I've thought through. And I'm like, I'm trying to set healthy boundaries and still learning how to do it. And he was a safe place to do it. And the guy was just like, okay. And turned around and left. He didn't get mad at me or anything. And they actually stopped coming to our house as much. So um, maybe it worked out for the best for everybody. But you're on a list now. It was one of the, I remember when my husband was offended, I was offended that he was offended. And I felt the need to explain my reasoning at the time. Now I'd just be like, all right, well, then you answer the door. Yeah. That was a few years ago that that happened, you know, but (laughs) it's just funny. And you could even see in the process as you are healing, like I can remember those middle stages where I didn't handle it the best, but I didn't Mm -hmm. handle it like I used to. Um, and, And I still have those moments, of course, but now like I didn't handle it the best is still like, okay, it's acceptable. I wish I would have handled it this way, but that's fine. There, nobody's upset with me, blah, blah, blah. It's just a honing of my skills, a honing of how I want to respond now, instead mm-hmm. of um, actually trying to figure out like to how to do it. Right. Right. So that makes a big difference. I, you know, and, and coming through, like I'm actually six weeks since I've had counseling, I have counseling today. It'd be the first time in six weeks. And nice. yes, and it was a little bit of a struggle, but I use so many healthy coping skills mm-hmm. and that's probably more what we're going to talk about than anything. Cause we've gotten to where we're just reviewing what I do yeah. over this time versus him really guiding me anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, a, it's just been a weaning away from it until I finally feel like, okay, I don't need anybody to check in with. I'm actually handling things in a way that I like, because he will still, he'll give me like suggestions or things like, well, did you think about maybe doing it this way? And I'll be like, no, I had, no, I did not. Let me, let me write that down, sir. Yeah. Um, you know, so I have a very direct manner, you know, this, and it's actually not something that I really like. It's a, it's a, it's a trauma response. Um, it pushes people away. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the it's one of the trauma responses that I cultivated and and got really good at. Yeah. It now does not serve me as well. But it's one of the only ways I know how to communicate is directly. Mm-hmm. That off that puts people off. So I have to then figure out how do I cope with how I feel with that and how do I change, you know, all of these things come with growth and with giving yourself the time. Yeah like fit into this new skin. I've talked about it on, um, on the, the Facebook page, but when I first learned all these skills and I had them sitting with me, it felt like I was wearing somebody else's skin. Yeah. And it didn't fit. And I didn't know how to move in it. And it was like tight in areas and it just didn't feel right. And now Mm -hmm. finally I'm feeling like, Oh no, that's my skin. I just didn't recognize it. 
Yeah. You know, I built all of that. It's it's part of me. And it stays with me, whether I use them or not. I reckon those coping skills are there and my brain still brings them up like, hey, you could have done this instead of this, just so you know. Yeah. You know, so it's, I don't know, it's a cool part of healing. Um, I just never expected, I never thought that I would be this where I'm at now. And I hope that this, not just this episode, but the whole podcast gives people hope that there is healing mm-hmm. beyond a really negative, dark place that you can start at and be be at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And I know when I talk to my clients, especially the ones where it's like we're in the second stage um, and we start talking and they're like, oh, like I have so much to fill you in on. And I'm like, okay, great. And some people will be like, oh, first I'm going to start with the positives and they'll go through all the positives or whatever. Others will start with the negatives. Um, but like they get through their stuff and they're at the end and they're like, okay, what are your thoughts? And I'm like, Sounds like you figured it out. And they're like, yeah, but like, what advice would you give me? I'm like, what advice do you need me to give you? Like, you you figured it out. You understood the problem. You understood your emotions. You felt your emotions. You didn't react to your emotions. Like, you worked on the situation. Your negative belief isn't pop. Like, what else are you looking for? Perfection. Um, That's what we're yeah. looking for. Perfection. And they're like, well, I just want to make sure I'm doing everything right. I'm like, does your body feel like you're doing everything right? Well, yeah, but. And I'm like, there's no but. There's no but. I'm like, you're doing great. Keep it up. See in a few weeks or whatever the case is. Um, And then you'll get the ones that really have that level of insight that did not have it in the beginning, but then obviously through the course of the work, using the coping skills and trusting the process and like, okay, well, Natalie says to try this. I'm just going to keep trying it, even though it feels weird, even though I don't like it, whatever the case is, to now developing your own sense of insight to where it's like, I knew exactly what was happening in the moment. I knew what I was feeling. This is what I did in order to kind of cope with my feelings. This is how I addressed the problem. Like, I think I did a freaking great job. And I'll be like, you did. You nailed it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like you've had counseling or something. Um, so they're like, man, like none of this would have been possible, you know, if it wasn't for you. And I'm like, I don't want to say that it's me. I'm like, because ultimately none of it would have been possible if you weren't willing to open up, to reach out and to try something different, to see that light at the end of the tunnel instead of being stuck in the darkness. Right. I, and I want listeners to think about this, not to, to minimize what the therapist does, but when you sew a garment, a beautiful garment, do you give all the credit to the sewing machine? Right. Or do you give the credit to yourself? When you yeah. cook something, do you give the credit to the utensils that you used or to yourself? When yeah. you grow and you need an instructor, you do not give the credit. When you go to class, do you go, oh, my teacher, they're the ones who did it all. You did the work. Right. You did yep. the homework. You showed up. You're the one who consistently came back, even though it hurt and it sucked and you didn't want yes. to do it. Yes. So no matter what, no matter who helped you along the way, yes, they deserve credit for helping you. But we are the ones who actually made it possible. Because if we hadn't yep. chosen to do it, it's not like you're going to call me and go, hey, I think maybe you need some therapy. I heard from a friend. Right. Do you want to set up some sessions? Let me guide. That's not how it works. No. So people need to change that narrative of it's because of you. And yes. you can acknowledge like, because of you, that's the first time that I was able to recognize X. And yes. now I do this. Sure. That's fine. Yes. But saying my therapist is the reason that I healed that's is true. not true. No, it's just we are just the tool. We are the utensil that you are yep. using. And yep. all the ones before us, maybe you picked up the wrong tool. Maybe you're trying to flip a hamburger with tongs and it keeps falling apart. So you right. finally found a hamburger spatula and now it's working. Like when you find the right tool, everything is a lot easier. But 
you as a client have to be open and ready to trudge through all of it in order to get where you want to be. We're just handing you shit along the way to help you climb that mountain faster or to help you stop from backsliding or whatever the case is. We're not doing your work for you. Right. And don't get scared when we say all of it because we don't mean all at once. Right. (laughs) You know, don't try not to focus on the whole forest. Yeah. Let us fo- let your let your provider focus on the forest, mm-hmm. and you work on tree by tree, getting through yeah. it. Yeah, and they will guide you and say, you know what? Oh, you're heading off too far this way or this way or whatever. Or here's a suggestion for getting that tree out of the way or whatever it is. Like, yeah, there's a reason that you that 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 analogy is used a lot in counseling. You can't see the forest through the trees. You get stuck in your own stuff. Yes. And yes. when you're stuck in your own stuff, it's really hard to believe that you can do something different because you haven't mm-hmm. seen a model and nobody's talked to you about it. And you're just like pulling yeah. it out of the ether and hoping that it's going to work. So, you know, having that, having that modeling is, is important, but having that guide, I mean, that's, that's been the biggest help for me. I have my, I've been looking at my DBT book. It's about this thick and, you know, I don't flip through it too often anymore because I've read it so many times. Um, but it's there and it's reassuring to know that I have that tool. It's the yeah. same thing with my therapist. When I finally transitioned out of therapy, he and I have talked about like, if there's ever a crisis, I can reach back out to him, um, until he retires and then we'll see what happens. But, you know, it's not like you're left on your own once you, I think people uh, fear healing too, because you know, I know this, I know this unhealthy, I know this response, even though I'm not like it, I know it. And you're asking me to do something unknown and scary and, yes. and that feels so big. Yeah. And so having somebody that you can trust to help guide you through it, but also just recognizing like sometimes you sit with the discomfort and do it anyway. Yes. So, yeah, I think that if anybody has any questions about healthy coping skills, the Facebook page is a great place to contact us. Um, Mm -hmm. I've been sharing a few things on there. We have the messenger through there. It's been fixed after our, uh, after our, yeah, our little soiree into hacking. And that was was fun. That was fun. Uh Uh Yeah. So, um, you know, hopefully we offer some tools ourselves that people feel comfortable with, but we're here to give you insights on both sides of that equation so that hopefully you can take them and then uh, implement them in your own life. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Baby steps. Baby steps, right? Don't have to, have to be the same size. Don't have to be in the same direction all the time. Pick a direction, keep going that way. But if you veer off a little bit, that's okay. Just come back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all right. Tangents are okay. Just come back. Yes. Yes. So, I like it. Yeah. I think that that's uh, a good place for us to wrap this, unless you got something else you want to add there, my dear. No. I think right. we covered it all. I feel like we did. Um, you know, I, we've given a couple of examples. I, I'm not going to sit here and list all the coping skills that I do because they may not work for everybody else. We've shown the bingo right. sheet. Um, I'll put that on. That's already on the Facebook page. I'll put the other sheet on the Facebook page. So they're accessible there. Hopefully we can put them in the, the link underneath mm-hmm. the, um, the podcast. But if not, they'll be accessible there and people will be able to check them out. Uh, and just... You know, like you said, one step at a time. Keep those deep breaths going, man. Yes. Right? All right. Well, it's always a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. With you too, my dear. Yeah. So thank you so much for all of your insight and being such a wonderful friend because it has helped me grow along the way. And I appreciate you. You're welcome. Again, I'm just a tool. I know. I know you're a tool. tool. I've known you for a long time. I know you're a tool. That's terrible. That's terrible. Is a better word. 
could, I could be a tool. Utensil. <laughs> utensil. I'm just a utensil. <laughs> Whatever. You know, our friendship and our relationship goes both ways, which is super important. Like right. it's not just a, it's not a one way street. No, no, I, I, what I appreciate it. To not talk about myself first a lot. I never wanted to feel like I'm using you for your skills. Yes. And that's how I think you, sh everybody should take that into account too. Like you, when you have those reciprocal relationships, um, when you have a relationship where you're reaching out to somebody, you need to make sure they're reciprocal. Yes. And if they're not, then again, it's not a healthy coping skill. So no, no, because then they, you're using them for your advantage rather than right. being able to give and take like a yep. normal relationship does. Right. Reciprocity. It's all about reciprocity. So yes, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, then thank me for being such a good friend too. There you go. Absolutely. You are a magical, <laughs> magical friend. I'm grateful for you. All right. Well, I look forward to the next time that we talk. And uh, again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, the Facebook page is probably the best place, although we do have an email. It's listed on the Facebook page. Um, it's sweet at, at gmail.com. I think we're good. You have a good day, Natalie. You too. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye.